Today, we'll dive deep into the hidden world of underwater internet cables. These submarine cables connect continents and carry almost all of the world's internet traffic. The network is massive, with cables reaching depths of up to 8,000 meters, where the pressure can reach 5,300 kilograms per square inch. Imagine an African elephant standing on your smallest toe. That's the kind of pressure these cables face. A massive network across the oceans. Submarine cables cover a vast area, with the smallest section between Azerbaijan and Turkmenistan under the Black Sea, spanning 300 kilometers, and the longest being the 6,600-kilometer-long 6 Maria Cable. This runs from Virginia Beach in the U.S. to Bilbao, Spain, across the dark depths of the Atlantic Ocean. Together, these cables cover over 1.4 million kilometers, enough to wrap around all the planets and moons of our solar system and still have cable left to circle the Earth twice. Why not satellites? You might wonder why we go to such lengths when satellites exist. Well, there are 493 submarine cables, each capable of handling 4,000 terabits of data per second. To give you an idea, one cable could stream 4K movies for 80 million people simultaneously. Satellites, in comparison, would only allow about 24,000 people to stream a 4K movie simultaneously. Satellites are also more expensive to maintain and replace. A single satellite replacement can cost up to 400 million US dollars. In contrast, laying and maintaining underwater cables, although challenging, is still cheaper and more efficient. How do these cables work? While they may sound massive, submarine cables are only about the thickness of a garden hose, and the actual fiber optic cable inside is as thin as a human hair. These fibers, made of glass or plastic, carry light signals. Data from computers is converted from electrical signals into light signals using transmitters, which then send the data as light pulses. The light pulses represent binary data, ones and zeros. The core of the fiber carries this light, and around the core is a layer called cladding, which keeps the light bouncing back into the core through a process known as total internal reflection. Since light signals weaken over long distances, repeaters are placed every 100 kilometers to boost the signal. These repeaters are powered by a copper layer running alongside the fiber, carrying 100,000 volts of DC current from land stations. What happens when cables break? Undersea cables can be damaged by earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, shark bites, or fishing activities. The most common cause, however, is fishing trawlers that drag nets across the seafloor. When they accidentally snag a submarine cable, the damage can be severe. So how do we find where the cable has broken? Modern cables are constantly monitored by data centers at both ends, and when the connection is lost, the break is detected immediately. To pinpoint the exact location, an optical time domain reflectometer, OTDR, is used. This device sends a light pulse through the cable, and by measuring how long it takes for the pulse to reflect back from the break, the distance to the damage can be calculated. Repairing a submarine cable. Once the location of the damage is confirmed, remotely operated vehicles, ROVs, are sent to the ocean floor. They examine the cable and bring the damaged section to the surface. The damaged part is cut out, and the fiber optic core, made of glass, is carefully spliced together to restore the connection. Sometimes, if the cable is too short, extra cable is added to make up for the loss. The repaired cable is then placed back on the ocean floor. While the process of laying and repairing submarine cables is slow and requires caution, it's much more efficient than relying on satellites. These cables are the backbone of global internet traffic, and despite their fragility, they're designed to withstand immense pressure and deliver reliable service. We hope this video has answered many of your questions about submarine cables, how they work, and what happens when they break. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and share. We'll see you in the next one. Thank you for your support.